left Dulles Airport on a Friday at 6.30 p.m. and we flew all the way to Charles de Gaulle in Paris, France, had a layover there. And from there we then went on to Lomé, Togo, the capital of Togo. Brother Randy Alderman, our faithful veteran missionary who was supported for years, met us there at the airport. We got our bags, we loaded them into two trucks and a 12 passenger van that he had, and we were hungry. And so we raced to the restaurant to get some food. Here's a little bit of a taste of the driving there. We went to a Togolese fast food restaurant. And after that, went to the hotel where we stayed the night and got some much needed rest. The next morning we got up early and we made our way to Kara, Togo, the second largest city in Togo. It was a nine hour trip. Here's some sights that we saw along the way. Imagine having to get a termite inspection with this termite mound growing in your backyard. Now that is a car top carrier. Well, we made it safe and sound. Thank the Lord for that. And we made it in time to attend the evening service there at the church that Brother Randy is currently planting, one of many he's planted. I had a chance to sing. Pastor had a chance to preach. Here's a little bit of that service. I might mention that Pastor did something he'd never done before. He preached, and his message was translated into two different languages. They are blind to the name of Christ. They do not see the need for salvation. As the pastor was preaching, all of a sudden we heard a Muslim prayer go out from the mosque. And I was just reminded of the great need to win souls here in the city of Kara. Well, it was Monday and it was time to get to work. We got to the job site and surveyed uh, the property. Here it is and you can see the pad there that we're going to be working on building the church building. The missionary did a great job having all the materials there ready for us, everything that we needed. Plenty of blocks. They actually make the blocks themselves, sand uh, for mortar and, and stone for cement. There's the actual cement mix itself. One of the first things we do is to get all our tools laid out. Each box, each check-in is packed to 49 and a half pounds. And the guy will check in two of those and then bring all his clothes and his carry-on bag. And here's the database that we have. It's got every single tool uh, organized by case and color. And you can search for any tool and it'll tell you exactly where it's located. It also helps us to pack up each day, make sure we've got all of our tools. We can work efficiently that way. We take a picture of every tool. We take a picture of the cases. We weigh every single tool. We know exactly what they're going to weigh. And the organization is a lot of work ahead of time, but it makes our job that much easier when we get there. Now in this video, we look like ants, but basically what we're doing is getting the block in position near where we're gonna be laying them so that we can work uh, a little faster. And it's a lot of hard work. Each one of those blocks probably weigh 20 some pounds and you're carrying them over and over again. Our guys work really hard. You come home from the day tired, but rewarding knowing that you're doing something for the Lord and for the church there, for the missionary. Meanwhile, Pastor was working really hard putting together this pencil holder. It's an annual tradition on the missions trip. Just kidding. Really, he was working with John, putting together these pews for the other church that uh, Brother Randy had, has started, and they knocked these pews out in short order. Meanwhile, Brother Randy's mixer had not been working for a while, and so we had gotten a part for him and uh, set our resident MacGyver, Richard Dean, on it, and sure enough, he was able to get it fixed and running so we could make our mortar and our concrete a lot faster. Then the welding crew, Joe Gambrell, Robert Murphy, Richard Dean, and Chris McCourt got busy laying out the metal and measuring uh, the trusses. 
and making cuts and getting ready to weld those trusses together. In the end, they were going to make four of them. Here's sort of an aerial view of the progress. The guys strapped me to a weather balloon and I just sort of floated around and got, no, no, Jonathan Haggard uh, brought his drone, which was really cool. And uh, we got to get some, some nice footage of our work. And you can see here by the end of the day, we'd gotten several courses of block up and we'd gotten a truss together. Good uh, bit of work done for the first day. Each day we'd get up at the crack of dawn, uh, five something in the morning, we'd have our devotions and we'd cram ourselves into this 12 passenger van that's 13 of us with the driver in a 12 passenger van <laughs> and we had some really close fellowship and uh, we would head over to the missionary's house uh, to have breakfast together. After a good breakfast, we'd head over to the work site and get busy. Here they are putting together the rest of the trusses, welding them and cutting them. Here's Brother Jonathan Haggard. He's cutting the block so that it can fit around the post. We use a diamond blade to do that. Meanwhile, our head deacon, Brother Drew Gardner, really missed watering his garden back home. And so he started to water the wall. Now you had to do this because you had to keep the, the stone wet. It's so hot there and you have to keep the mortar wet so everything will stick together. And here he is doing some heavy lifting, putting concrete into the U ring beam. And uh, that uh, just gives it the rigidity that it needs uh, to make sure the wall is nice and, and firm. Here's Brother Daniel working. They worked really hard. Brother Kevin. One of the highlights of the week for me was teaching in their Bible Institute. And Brother Randy has now planted over 40 churches. And what an encouragement was to see these young men, these pastors, men that have surrendered for the ministry, training with God's word. <laughs> Pastor taught on Tuesday, I taught on Wednesday, Richard and Drew taught on Thursday, and what a blessing it was to fellowship with these men around God's word. All of the group enjoyed getting to know the Togolese men and women that worked with us. One day they offered to share a snack with us. This is beignye, sort of like an African donut. And uh, they also had like a sort of fried uh, cornbread with it that we ate. They had a secret sauce that we didn't try, but we did eat the donuts and it was delicious. And we certainly enjoyed fellowshipping with them and receiving their kindness. And so here you can see the progress. By the end of the day, Tuesday, we had uh, the block going up around the post where the window would be. Had several more layers of block all around the building. Pretty big building, uh, a lot of block to be laid. And then you can see we had finished our last truss. Now they were ready to go ahead and be painted the next day. The term morning person doesn't quite adequately describe pastor. No, I'm thankful for the energy pastor brings on these trips. And he's such a fun person to work with and a great example for each one of us and a great wor hard worker. On Wednesday, he and Chris McCourt took on the big task of painting all of the trusses. There were four of them that we got done and they need to be painted on both sides. Here you see the guys flipping them over so they could be painted on the other side. If you thought our job was hard, you can imagine how hard the job was of the ladies that fed us. Uh, 13 famous guys working hard. We eat hard too, and I appreciate Jeanette Alderman. She fixed some great meals. Uh, her adopted daughter, Esther, they worked really hard to get us breakfast, lunch, and dinner each day, and they were just tremendous. Well, after lunch, it was back to the work site. More block to be laid. Drew and Nathan Gardner and John McCone would dunk the blocks in water, would take care of getting us mortar and then they would hand the blocks up to us and then myself and Nathan Cattell, Kevin and Daniel and Jonathan Haggard we would all lay the block make sure that it's level and make sure that the wall is going up straight It was hot. I think the missionary said one day it had gotten up to 106 degrees 
It was sort of a desert heat, so you didn't have the humidity, but that sun sure was beating down on you, so we had to make sure we stayed hydrated. By Thursday, Pastor and Chris had finished painting all the trusses, and so they went on to go ahead and paint the purlings that would be connected to the trusses, and I think Brother Randy said this saved them a couple weeks worth of work alone. Thursday, we worked clean up to dark, trying to get as much work as we could get done, lay as much block as we could. Brother Joe and Brother Richard, uh, they cut off some of the metal so that it would be ready to receive the trusses. And here's some pictures of some of the work it was done toward the beginning and some of the work then that what it looked like toward the end. Well, at the end of the day, we got some pictures with some of our friends that we'd made throughout the week, guys we'd worked with and sweat with. And uh, we were able to give the saw, uh, cutoff saw, to Brother Randy. He needed that, so we give that to him as a gift. And here's a word of thanks from our missionaries, Randy and Jeanette Alderman. Greetings, Temple Baptist Church, and thank you so much for sending the construction team our way. Can't tell you how much it has been a blessing for us to be with them this week. They've blessed our hearts, they've encouraged us, and they worked their hearts out on the church in hot, dusty Togo. And we just can't thank you enough. They, they've captured the heart of our people as they've been around them. And we just enjoyed having them there so much. And we appreciate you for sacrificing so that they could come our way. Well, here's our team, our fearless leader, Pastor, myself, uh, Joe Gambrell, who does a great job as our foreman every year. We thank him for that. Daniel Shepard, Jonathan Haggard, Kevin Canalicchio, John McCone, Chris McCourt, Nathan Cattell, and Robert Murphy. And then father-son combo, Nathan Gardner and Drew Gardner. What a great group of guys to work with. And we want to thank you for allowing us to represent you, our church, there in Togo, Africa. I hope one day... You'll pray about going on a missions trip with us.